to introduce our candidates. Uh, to your right is the Republican candidate for first selectman here in North Stonington, Sean Murphy. And next to him is our petition candidate, Robert Testa. And by a flip of the coin, um, Mr. Murphy will go first with his one minute opening statement, uh, followed by Mr. Testa. So, Mr. Murphy, you can begin whenever you're ready. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the day and to the chamber and the uh, League of Women Voters and the library for uh, having this event this evening. Uh, if you haven't met me before, I'm Sean Murphy. Uh, I'm currently uh, semi-retired. I've lived in town for only about 25 uh, years. I previously worked uh, in administration at uh, Connecticut College, uh, where I was for 15 years. And prior to that, uh, I served as a commission officer in the Navy, uh, retired from the Navy after 23 years. I have a great deal of uh, leadership uh, experience. Uh, I have a, a, a great deal of financial, administrative, uh, project management, materials management experience. And I last served the town as your selectman for six years, the Board of Education for two years, and the Board of Finance for two years. I have a great deal of knowledge. And that's Might your time. Stop or do I have <laughs> uh, Mr. Testa, one minute opening. Hi. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Bob Testa, currently one of your selectmen. Uh, I've been involved in the town on the Board of Education, now as a selectman. Uh, for more than 10 years now, been involved in the community as a coach uh, with the rec in Little League. Uh, I've been hearing for years from people in this town that they think we need to move forward, we can do better. And, and I believe we can. As uh, it's differences of opinion, different mindsets. Uh, you know, my, my experience in, in management, project management, uh, union negotiations, uh, dealing with negotiating contracts and dealing with personnel issues uh, would be, be very beneficial to this position. Uh, in the past two years, as your selectman, I brought forth several initiatives that I felt were important, improving communication with the public. Uh, we've begun recording the meetings, which was stopped under the previous administration. We Mr. Tessa, time is up. I hope you can get to those points and work them into the debate, but uh, one minute can go fast, That's I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to start. Uh, our first uh, question goes to Mr. Murphy. Um, and uh, we, I got a few questions on this topic. We took questions from the audience. Uh, many residents are concerned about rising property taxes and their ability to remain here in retirement. How do you intend to address this concern? And we begin with Mr. Testa. And again, now you have you know more time to work with the running clock. Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Murphy. My mistake, Mr. Murphy. Well, I think uh, addressing our need to expand on our economic development will uh, expand our tax base and assist us in moving forward with any capital projects uh, that we have planned for the town and uh, will help grow the grand list to be able to keep up uh, with the cost of living uh, changes and the cost of running our, our government. And uh, I think that uh, uh, we we're on a good start for our economic development. Uh, we have, uh, a, we're working off a recent plan of conservation and development. We have a, uh, economic development action plan in place and we've made progress on it uh, we've made changes to our uh, uh, zoning regulations that will allow us to be more business friendly and uh, so that businesses don't have to jump through hurdles to uh, to uh, apply for and be approved for uh, doing business in North Stonington and we've hired an economic development coordinator. Uh, uh, all these things have been uh, funding 
for the position and for the initiatives out of the plan have been incorporated into uh, our budget plan moving forward. Uh, so uh, with time, we should be able to uh, build upon the, uh, the tax base through economic development and be able to support uh, any increases in expenses. Um, Mr. Testa, your, your comments on, on this uh, question is concerned um, about rising taxes, particularly its effect on the ability of people to remain here in retirement. Uh, economic development and alternate sources of revenue are obviously important. Uh, utilizing the vacant buildings that we have, trying to fill them as a start. Economic development also involves uh, redevelopment of our existing businesses and supporting those. We don't want any more to leave. The, the aspects of our uh, economic economy that seem to get overlooked sometimes are the, the hospitality and tourism aspects of our location. Because part of our problem is the real estate market has also gone down. And I, I believe that by promoting the, the tourism aspects and hospitality aspects of our town, we'll bring people here, get them to spend time It'll create a market for smaller businesses or other businesses to want to invest here because the key to economic development is having a market. And a lot of people think the amount of traffic we have is a market, but it's not. Uh, those are the, and, and that's important to us, but we have immediate needs with EMS, with the school facilities. Uh, Tim Maine and myself, a top priority for us is to look at operational efficiencies immediately because those needs have to be addressed now. Uh, we can't wait for the sources of revenue to start coming in years from now. So by recognizing some savings, we'll be able to apply those to the upcoming debt payments and hopefully defer the cost and keep your taxes down. Um, uh, just to follow up on that, is there anything, both candidates talked about economic development, broadening the tax base to try to hold down tax, taxes generally. Is there anything the town is doing or can do for particularly those people on fixed incomes? Do, do I have more time? Because I wanted to touch on, I was just trying to get in. Yeah. Um, uh, another yeah, another important aspect of that, which for years under the last Mullane Murphy administration went nowhere was affordable housing options. In the last two years, the Affordable Housing Committee, since I've joined the Board of Selectmen, has made tremendous progress. You need those alternatives. Uh, I went to a recent event the end of August, right here at the library, and met a woman, lived in town all her life. She just can't afford it anymore and there's no other options and she's looking to go to Stonington now. We can't have that. You know, we have to develop those other options for people to, to stay in this community. You know, a community supports everyone and when they need you the most, we can't turn our back on them. All right, um, Mr. Murphy. We seem to have gotten off the, the question, so I forgot what it was even. Well, uh, <laughs> now, uh, the follow-up, the, the the person expressed concerns about ability to stay here in retirement. Mr. Tessa said one alternative is have more affordable housing, so uh, maybe you could still live here in the community and find something more affordable. Um, so the, you know, the topic was the ability of people, you know, as they're retiring in fixed incomes to stay in a town with high taxation. Well, I think we, uh, we are taking uh, initiatives to keep our cost under control uh, since uh, when Nick and I served uh, on the Board of Selectmen, uh, we were able to put five solar projects in place. Uh, it, municipal uh, solar arrays on five of our buildings. That'll keep our electric costs down. We've reduced the number of uh, employees uh, at the, uh, in our highway department to keep costs down. So we are, we are keeping co uh, costs down. Our, our, our budget uh, this uh, last time was a very, very minimal increase. Uh, I don't have the number offhand, but uh, we didn't increase the budget much at all this time, whether it be general government or schools. I think the schools was less than 1.5% uh, uh, increase. Uh, so we are keeping, uh, we are successful in keeping costs down. And, uh, uh, and as far as the affordable housing a aspect, uh, I don't know that uh, we've done anything to, uh, you know, against affordable housing. 
Uh, affordable housing in, in this town means you're uh, a house that's uh, $225,000 uh, or below. 40% uh, of our housing stock is, is $225,000 or below. Uh, our problem is the state and their, uh, the statute requires uh, a deed restriction to be placed on those properties is only, uh, in order to qualify as affordable. And uh, so I think that's what we need to get changed. Any of the, the, the affordable housing that has been proposed uh, for town has been that same price range uh, that we already have in town. Uh, it's determined, you know, it's affordable because it's deed restricted, but it's the same, same price. Uh, before we move on, Mr. Tess, any thoughts on, uh, on Yes. That? Basically, when you say nothing was ever done against, there was nothing done to support. And in the past two years, we've obtained a $400,000 housing grant to try to help people stay in their homes and make needed improvements. We've taken a property that the town inherited, down on Anthony Road, and we're working with a nonprofit to turn that back into a housing that will go toward our affordable housing cap and get that back on the tax rolls to bring in more revenue. We have to start thinking outside the box. Yes, we have existing housing options. That could be, but you're, you're requiring people to deed it affordable. Uh, the, the state, that's fine. Everybody's known it for years. During the entire uh, administration, it was known that you have to have a plan in place. And as long as we control our own destiny and put a plan in place to account for affordable housing, it'll protect us against predatory developers that'll come in here and build the things that everybody's so afraid of. But I, I think it, it benefits all, young and old. It's not only the, the older generation that's having trouble uh, living here, it's the younger generation that goes off to college, wants to come back and reinvest, but they just can't, simply can't afford to live here. All right, thank you. Can we see, uh, calculate the time for our candidates and the respective timekeepers, the one uh, in front of yourself, uh, both, hold, both hold them up, we have the number. Uh, Mr. Test, so you have uh, 21 and a half minutes left and uh, about 21 minutes uh, for Mr. Murphy. Um, the next question goes, uh, begins <coughs> with Mr. Test, and uh, it's, it's sort of related to the topic we've been talking about. Um, the current fiscal year budget carried a quarter mil tax increase. That's the number uh, one of our candidates is looking for. Um, the questioner was wondering, um, can you, you know, if elected, can you uh, promise to hold the budget to that kind of tax increase going forward, or uh, was this the exception? We might be looking at bigger tax increases uh, in the next couple of years. And Mr. Test, you get the first crack at that one. Well, if you're talking like in, in the next year, um, I, I, I feel confident that uh, we can keep a lid on taxes, but no one can promise you uh, that there's gonna be no tax increase. Things have been pushed down the road. Uh, we're dealing with appropriations that have been ongoing. We got the EMS project that most certainly is probably gonna come back for an appropriation. Uh, you're gonna have a school facilities plan that's gonna be coming forward. These are all gonna be impacts on you. That's why I, I said previously, the priority to Tim Main and myself is to look at better ways of operating. You know, if we can reduce our operating costs, work more efficiently, work with surrounding communities on some collaboratives, free up some money to offset that debt, yes, we can try and control the tax increase. But let's be honest, you have some big expenditures coming. And if we continue on the path we're going right now, the only way for you to pay for them is to raise your taxes. We have to find ways to offset that cost. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Murphy, the, uh, the question whether that uh, one quarter of a mil tax increase um, is something you would expect uh, going forward. Uh, I would not promise to hold the tax rate at the, at the current rate, uh, knowing that at, the, at this time, we, uh, in this year's budget, we don't have uh, payments for the EMS building. Uh, included in that, that'll start next year. That's an automatic uh, increase. 
uh, and uh, I anticipate a uh, uh, school facilities project moving forward and down the line that will be an increase. Uh, Mr. Tesla <coughs> talks about realizing savings at Town Hall or I guess it would have to be our schools that you're talking about because uh, they make up uh, probably 70% of our budget. And uh, I'm familiar with Town Hall. I'm familiar with the skeleton crew that we have there now. Uh, I'm not willing to give any, any positions up uh, at this time. Uh, we're spread thin as it is. And uh, we, we also have uh, union contracts in place that take us into the out years that uh, require uh, certain increases. So uh, to, I think it's unrealistic to say that you're going to uh, find the savings when you, you, know, you uh, haven't been involved in, in uh, the inner workings of town hall and uh, you, you haven't been involved with the uh, labor reductions that we've uh, taken in the past. Uh, yes, it's a constant battle to look for ways to save, and uh, we've managed to be successful quite a few years. And uh, uh, but to looking into the future, uh, we can't guarantee that that that'll be the case. Anything more on that, um, Mr. Tester? For we... uh, yeah, I like to. Uh, I'm not sure I mentioned anything about any town hall employees or any reductions there. I'm saying that looking at operational efficiencies. One thing I've long um, argued for is collaboration with other towns. And when I became a selectman, that was a priority. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we put together a committee that's working with Preston. They're looking at ways to save money, to work better together, purchasing. If it's, a, if it's equipment for the highway department, can we share those costs? You know, can, we, can we share different positions? Those are ways you have to start looking at things. So what Mr. Murphy's telling you is, it's going to be the same old, same old. He's going to continue the current trend. We're going to just keep operating the way we are. We're not going to look to improve our efficiencies. I can promise you that we will. And I'm very confident that we can operate more efficiently without sacrificing services, without costing people their jobs. Uh, and, and that, to me, sums it up right there, that your fiscal well-being is not going to be looked after. And that's a priority, you know, and, and you, your first question touched on that. So if we're not willing to look at how we can do better and we think we're, we're doing fine, I think if you go around and you start talking to people and asking about their financial struggles, I think they can tell you we can do better. And I think we can. Uh, Mr. Murphy, do you want to take a last crack at that before we uh, move on to another topic? No, I'll save my time. All right. Uh, so the next question goes to Mr. Murphy, and um, we, we got a lot of questions about the situation with the schools. Um, so I'm going to begin with this one. Um, uh, the questioners want to know, and this to Mr. Murphy, um, are you committed to keeping a K through 12 school system in North Stonington, or you, uh, are you open or supportive of uh, regional alternatives? And we begin with Mr. Murphy on that one. I am not supportive of regional alternatives. I'm for keeping our high school in town. Uh, I think that that keeps us together, having a sense of community, that the students have a sense of belonging in town. Uh, so I'm not, uh, I wouldn't pursue that. In fact, I have here articles uh, with me tonight of how, what harm that does to rural community schools. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's in the best interest of the town. I'd much rather pursue a more reasonable uh, school facility project than what was previously submitted. And uh, I am looking forward to uh, the results of the, uh, uh, the committee's work. Uh, I actually attended uh, uh, in a meeting the other night, and uh, they seem to be making considerable progress and will be uh, bringing us uh, uh, a project that uh, is considerably less than the other and still fulfills 
uh, some of the major uh, goals of previous projects. Uh, Mr. Testa, your uh, response to that question. Yep. We, absolutely, we need to support the existing system, but it has to be within our means. <clears throat> and this all, a lot of this came up years ago with this feasibility study, and it actually went full circle with the last two referendums. The concern was you're going to the people, explaining to them what it's going to take to maintain what you have. It's going to be a facilities plan as well as properly funding the education budget and the initiatives put forth by the administration. The only reason that that ever came up, and it wasn't, no one advocated and no town officials have ever said we're closing the high school. That was a lot of emotional argument that tore this town apart. And we need to stop going there. Because the focus should be to come up with a reasonable plan. And then the public asked during the last two referendums, that's simply too much for me to afford. A lot of people said, what are our options? That was the whole purpose of that feasibility years ago. It wasn't to encourage one way or the other. It was to give the people information because no town official, in my opinion, is going to make that decision. It's going to be you, the taxpayer. You control the money. It's our job to provide the, provide the best services for the children, the best opportunities, safe facilities. But I agree with Sean that the project needs to be reasonable so, we don't, so we're able to afford the other things that we have to take care of in town, as well as properly fund the budgets. Uh just to clarify, Ms. <clears throat> Testa, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I believe in the past you were open to the potential for going to the regional system for the high school because of economies of scale. Um, has there been a change of position or just to kind of clarify? For it, our, for it's audience? not a change of position. Uh, what I think is, like I just explained, you put the information out to the people and you let the people decide. You have to be prepared that if you put another $40 million project out there that the school says we have to have or we're going to lose accreditation, we're going to lose the high school, and the people call you on it, what is your alternative? And you need, to, you need to tell the people. Now, if the people say we don't want to send our kids to Stonington, we want them to stay here, then they're going to have to make that choice and say, okay, we're going to scale back some other project to pay for this. It's, it's, all, it's all going to come down to the people. No town official is going to make that decision, in my opinion. I know the Board of Education has a statutory authority, but you fund the budgets, you fund the projects. And if there's, and that's a discussion you have, you would have to have if the people just turn their back on the system and say, we're not going to fund it. But I don't think anybody should be encouraging it. We should be coming up with a plan to keep what we have because of the importance to the community. And that often gets twisted when I say that. But the reality is, like I said, it's going to be you that decides. Uh, Mr. Murphy, it does seem North Stonia sort of faces a catch-22 <clears> in that there seems to be a lot of support for the schools, They're the local schools, yet voters keep turning down the money necessary to improve those schools that everyone seems to agree in education has to be done. So you know, how do you address that, that seeming contradiction uh, here in North Stonington if you're a first selectman? How do you address it? You relook at the, the prior requirements. You have a committee, and we have done just that, uh, established a committee to uh, re rethink uh, what was presented before and come up with uh, a new plan. And uh, uh, I'm confident that uh, uh, a new plan will gain much more support uh, the next time around and I hope it's in place uh, uh, I hope we have our paperwork to the state by June 30th so we could be included in, in the next round for consideration um, so just to clarify on your point um, you will keep working towards eventually getting a bond issue approved that allows you to repair these schools you're not you don't see, as Mr. Tess said, you look at alternatives if people keep voting it down, it sounds like you've ruled that out, any kind of regional alternative. Is that correct? Yes, I have. I okay. think that, uh, you know, even if it came down to doing very little for the schools, as long as uh, these kids remain safe in the schools, as long as they're uh, still getting the uh, quality education that they're getting today, uh, and I must say, I, I, I think it, they're getting a better education than many of our surrounding towns and are scoring higher on tests and 
uh, uh, larger percentages uh, of students are moving on uh, to higher education. So uh, I don't want to look at that necessarily at that possibility yet. I think we, uh, uh, of, of no project, I, I, I'm still confident uh, that we could have a project that will satisfy uh, the school system and, and, our, and our needs. Uh, any last Did, word, Mr. Test, on the school yes, situation? Yes, no, I just, I just want to be clear. I'm not saying looking at any other options right now. And what I'm saying is when the Board of Education, and they, pre they present a school project and say, if we don't, if they tell the people, if we don't get these facilities upgrades and these improvements, we're going to lose accreditation and, you know, all this, that's the information that's being put out there. It may be accurate, but if you lose your accreditation, everybody says on that argument, well, what's the sense of having your high school? So you have to be careful with the information you're putting out. And you could force people into You put the ultimatums out there. Uh, sometimes it could come back on us. So the goal is to put, put forth a reasonable project that addresses the needs. We're building this school project that comes forward. Everybody keeps mentioning NEASC. That'll take care of itself within the, the scope of the project. You're putting a facilities project together for the children of North Stonington, for education and the, and the taxpayers, and for this town. That's what you're investing in. Everybody's getting hung up on the NEASC, and I think that'll just take care of itself part of the project. Okay. Uh, before I move on to the next set of uh, topic, uh, <coughs> we can get uh, time calculation for both our candidates. And, uh, we're at uh, 15 minutes for Mr. Tester, 16 minutes for Mr. Murphy, so we're doing good on that. Uh, next question goes to Mr. Tester, and I've got a couple of candidate-specific <coughs> questions for, for Mr. Tester first. Um, uh, the question was, points out your platform in 2013 had much to do with economic development, and the questioner wants to know what have you done in the last two years as selectmen uh, to push for more economic development? I've supported the proposal for the economic development coordinator. Uh, matter of fact, I, I took the opportunity uh, that presented us to take our economic development coordinator to the uh, grand opening of the outlets to network to try and get them out there in the public and, and make some business contacts. Uh, I mean, we have an economic development commission uh, that should be really focusing their effort on that aspect of it. Uh, I mean, I, a, a, as a selectman, other than trying to encourage and when I speak with business people, uh, I've been approached by people looking that have interest in coming to this town um, some of the big concerns that they pose are our taxes and incentives. Um, before you get your kind of candidate specific question, any comment, uh, reaction to what you heard from Mr. Testa? Yeah. <clears throat> I would argue, uh, after reading uh, Mr. Testa's uh, brochure, uh, he, in his brochure, he states he wants to develop an economic development plan. Uh, I got news for you, Bob, it's been created. Mm -hmm. Uh, the selectmen have been very busy uh, at their meetings, uh, but it hasn't been uh, dealing with economic development. It's been fending off uh, arguments between the selectmen and uh, not making any progress on my true goal of economic development. Uh, we've had tremendous number of attacks at meetings. Uh, we've had interrogation of uh, town uh, towns folks for in the audience uh, employees of the town uh, that has to stop we need to get on to economic development we have a plan the selectmen need to get on board and become part of that plan well i can speak to this when it comes to economic development particularly on the 95 corridor water and sewer utilities is important when i first got on the board of selectmen uh, I believe we were sitting at an EDC meeting when this came up on progress. And the, the typical answer we get from the first selectman, nah, I've been playing phone tag, I'm communicating. It was my request to start documenting our efforts to get that going, because that's a vital part of that, pro that process over there. When you talk about arguments or whatever, 
Sean, for six years, you sat there. And my first crack at the budget found a street sweeper that was placed under contractual services in the town garage. We discovered the first electman authorizing town employees to take over 400 gallons of oil to, to his own home that was supposed to be going to a town oil tank. A week after we found out that, that oil ends up, we had, we had three deliveries. So when you want to talk about this contentious stuff, uh, it's just like equipment, town equipment that should be sold and the money should go back to the taxpayers being sold for a fraction of the price with no documentation. Personal information being accessed by town employees put on on social media. You know, those are data breaches. So what I've heard here tonight from you, Sean, is everything's great. We're not going to look at ways to save money and lower the tax burden on the people. I'm going to turn a blind eye like you did for six years and did nothing. So either you knew or should have known of these things or you're an enabler. So I, I don't know what, uh, what brought that into the economic development question, but... Um, Let's give Mr. Murphy a chance to respond. Uh, Mr. Tessa said he's just doing his job, raising questions, pointing out things. We proved nothing on the oil deal. Really? I'm, I'm well, at, I have the floor here. Mr. Murphy's chance. I sat there for six years and did nothing on the board. I want to read a list of things that I was involved in. Replaced boilers in each of the schools upgrading to gas efficiency. Installed backup generators in both town hall buildings. Installed five solar arrays, old town hall, highway garage, transfer station, senior center, and firehouse. Purchased Hewitt property, adding a half million dollar restaurant to the town's assets. Negotiated a lucrative agreement for Bon Appetito. Replaced the Old Town Hall Bridge and repaired the Village Green Bridge. Rebuilt 15 damaged roads and, and culverts. Rebuilt the recreation area, adding a volleyball court. Added an addition onto the transfer station <clears throat> building and added a compactor to save cost. Built a new truck wash station, repaved and added proper drainage. Purchased a bus for the senior center. I was involved when I served on the, the, uh, the board, and I'm proud of the accomplishments that we made as a team. You haven't been a team on the board of selectmen. The selectmen have made a lot of progress in the last two years. So uh, I, I would differ with you on that. Well, and, oh. well no questions from the, from the audience. Um, uh, you know, I'll give you a last word on this. You know, Mr. Uh, Murphy was pointing out the things that they have accomplished. Uh, I, I mean, and uh, Sean, Pop, time. I'll give you <coughs> well, one of the chance for we give him his specific. <coughs> one of one of the things that that I guess you could be proud of is, you know, the dam project that we that when I became a board member inherited. You approved the project. You approved the the funding and the scope, only to find out that it's not even up to any standards. It's been deemed that it's not safe. And we just spent a half a million dollars that you approved on a pedestrian walkway. Um, the EMS project, you didn't properly vet that. That project should have been clearly defined, a better scope of work, and a more definitive pricing before it went forward to the people. Now, instead, you pass it, because of an election year, you dump it on a volunteer committee to now come back and say, hey, we got you 6.3 million, make it happen. That's not fair. Those people have been working hard to do what should have been done by the town officials before it went to the people. We, uh, I'm going to stop this exchange there. We will get to the, uh, to the uh, EMS project. Uh, we have a question on that. Um, but first, I want to give uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Murphy his <coughs> candidate-specific question. Um, question being, uh, would Nick Mullane be your guide, your partner, or the power behind the throne, or none of the above, if you're elected first selectman and he becomes selectman? I don't know. Uh, I, I think, Paul, you've had a chance, as well as uh, uh, people in the audience here, to read uh, my resume. 
I don't need someone to help me lead. I have a great deal of leadership experience, uh, but I am not going to walk away or don't wish to walk away from 30 plus years of municipal service and knowledge in this town. So I chose uh, Nick Mullane as my running mate to tap into that, that tremendous resource of information to have. I plan to ran, run uh, my own town hall, uh, our own town hall, because I don't <coughs> claim to do any, every, uh, anything alone. Uh, I'm not in this for me, I'm in it for we, and that's the town of North Stonington. Uh, any comment from you? Mr. I, I, I had a comment on that. on that. Sean, you brought up your resume, and you know, I, I commend you for your accomplishments. Um, I, I respect anybody who served in the military. But one thing that I thought was peculiar was the last two years. You left out the last two years of what you've been doing. And I'd like to see if you would comment on that. What you, you know, your jobs you've held in the last two years, things, you, things you've done, seems to be unaccounted for. During that time, I... If you I, want to respond, that's up to you. Yeah. I decided to become semi-retired. I've been working uh, two part-time jobs. Uh, neither of those really contribute to my resume. Uh, I'm only currently only working one of those jobs now as, as a uh, uh, at Lowe's Home Center. Uh, I'm not in a leadership role right now at Lowe's Home Center. Uh, the town, the town, uh, I think, uh, needs me. And I'm stepping forward uh, in hopes to, to lead the town. That gap in my resume, you, you don't account, need to account for every uh, minute of your life in your resume. You're applying for a job, you put the highlights of your strengths uh, that will benefit you in that job on there. Uh, the town's not gonna benefit from the great experiences uh, that I've had at Lowe's dealing with customers and helping with them with their home improvement projects. No, no, I would agree. It just, I, I think. We could uh, kind of hold the applause it takes away from our time we have for the candidates and it's kind of not really, not really fair. So this guy, I should have said that before we started. So going forward, we could hold the applause uh, till the end. Um, do you have anything more, Mr. Oh, I would agree with that. But it just seemed when you're going to tout your experience and bring out things from 20 years ago, you leave the most immediate part, um, which you can explain it any way you want. To me, you want full disclosure, I would assume. And, and it just seems like a little odd to leave that, that portion off. There's nothing, and, and is never mind. All right. Next question to Mr. Testa. Uh, why don't we look at the time here? It's a good spot for we. Uh... Ask Mr. Test his question. <coughs> and, uh, okay, ten, about ten and a half minutes, Mr. Test, and uh, about eleven and a half minutes uh, from Mr. Murphy. And the next question, uh, Mr. Testa, you're up. Um, um, uh, if you're elected as first selectman, will you treat the position as a full-time job? First crack at that, Mr. Testa. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Murphy. And then some. And then some. 40 hours plus. All right. Probably another 40. It's a seat dance that didn't use much time. There we go. <laughs> All right, Mr. Murphy. Um, it, this topic came up earlier. I got several questions on it. I'm going to try to ask it fairly new, new, neutrally. Um, uh, where does the fault lie for the problems the emergency services building project confronted and what lessons should be learned from the experience and uh, we begin with Mr. Murphy on that. I haven't been involved in the firehouse because I haven't been a selectman I haven't been involved and followed that uh, to the degree I would have as a selectman, uh, but uh, and I, what I know of the project is that uh, bids came back uh, higher than the dollars that they have left. 
and they were going to have to go back to the drawing board and resend it out to bid. Uh, I haven't <coughs> been to selection meetings except catching the tail end after work. Uh, I haven't uh, learned that there's, uh, you know, this is the first <coughs> time hearing that there's uh, real issues uh, with that. Uh, uh, I was under the impression, and I hope it, and I, uh, that the bids were thought to come back high because they gave such a short time for the contractors to, to respond, that they may not have had enough time to compi uh, compile the detail to bid the project so that they more than likely came back high so that they would cover, uh, uh, basically cover their, uh, uh, their, their amount of their proposal. Uh, I anticipate getting into uh, and catching up on where the project stands now. Uh, and uh, I'll have the opportunity to do so uh, without my evening job. All right, thank you. Um uh, Mr. Tessa, the question is, uh, where do you, the, do you feel the fault uh, lays for the emergency services building project problems and what lessons should be learned from the experience? I think it starts with us as town officials. Before we bring something to the people, we should clearly define what it's going to be and have some harder, harder cost factors. Uh, you know, that came out as a conceptual project. It was, you know, the needs were expressed and so forth. The problem we're running into now is people see that, uh, the conceptual drawings, and that's their impression of what they were getting, the brick building and all that. Um, the lesson learned should, should be clearly define it, come up with a more definitive scope so the people, so what you're voting on is pretty much actually what you're going to be getting. Uh, unfortunately, like I said earlier, this got put forward, the estimates and numbers were old, were years old. They weren't updated. Uh, we can learn a lot from this project on, on just simply doing our diligence prior to coming to the people for the money. And in all fairness to the committee, they've been working hard at trying to stay within that budget. And I know there's a lot of uh, displeasure and, and anxiety amongst the public, but I, I can tell you that committee has, has done a tremendous job to look out for your tax dollars. They're continuing to do so. Um, Sean is <clears throat> correct on one aspect. There was a uh, flurry of addendums that went out during the bid process, the first one. Uh, the selectmen discussed that. We felt that uh, there was a good chance that the contractors rounded up just to be on the safe side because of uh, all the last minute information. The bids did come back higher than expected and we made a decision to reject the bids and, and go back out. And I think that's uh, doing due diligence by you to try to get the best number possible. And then the next challenge is uh, going to be to uh, address the shortage, whatever it may be. The committee is planning a presentation for the people to explain to you how we've gotten to this point. And uh, you know, more, more information will come once we go back out to bid. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Murphy? As I mentioned, the working nights and not being able to keep up on this particular project and attend meetings. I want people to know that I am concerned about it, I, uh, about the uh, project. And in fact, I was on the previous uh, public safety uh, complex committee and, and participated in that. So I do have an interest in this and following through uh, and getting us a new EMS building. All right, thank you. Uh, next question goes to Mr. Tesca. Uh, I can't vouch for the premise of this question, not living in North Stonington, but here it is. Um, it's no secret that our town seems to be divided. How do you propose to reunite our town again, Mr. Tesca? Uh, I, I think what, what divides this town is a lot of, uh, we have differences of opinion on many issues and there are certain groups within the town that seem to always be at the center of that and they can always point the finger at me and I, I take that criticism 
but I will stand up for what's right. I will stand up for all the people. And contrary to the, the comments earlier about this contentious stuff at meetings, I call it good governance. You need someone that's watching out for you. All these things have been going on, and when you finally take a stand and go up against the entrenched establishment to try to make things better and more accountable, it's viewed as bad. So those who like to criticize about that, I would think are condoning the bad behavior, and that needs to change. And I think, you know, everybody wants to point the finger toward my direction on the Board of Selectmen. Myself and Mr. Donahue um, and Mr. Mullane have worked well together despite some of these things that come up, but I will not compromise on any questionable or ethical issues that hurt this community. And that's when you've seen some of the, the um, debates, spirited debates, I guess you would want to call them. So I think the leadership uh, has to set the tone. We lead by example. And if people, if we store trust and confidence in our town government, that will go a long way. And I think with uh, the schools is a big part of the community. Um, one of my priorities would be to uh, work very closely with Superintendent Nero, because we're a small town. And the school, uh, to me, the superintendent and the, and the first selectman should be working well together because everything is intermingled. All these projects are gonna affect one another, uh, whether it's the EMS project, the school facilities project, the budgets, uh, you know, it, it happened on the Board of Education. You know, people can say, uh, you know, there were some times there, and yes, I stood up for some misuse of public funds and different things that went on. But I think people realized once when I took over Chairman of the Board of Education, things quieted down very much. Meetings will run efficiently, and it changed the whole tone and tenor. Superintendent Nero came in, and same thing, Can we, we worked well together. And I, I think I've already proven what I can do in that leadership role, and that changed the tone there. Um, and uh, Mr. Murphy, your chance. Uh, it's no secret that our town seems to be divided. How do you propose to reunite our town again? I don't see our town as divided. We may have a small group uh, of folks that are uh, anti-first selectmen and are doing everything they can to, tr to try to destroy all the good works that he has done uh, for the town in the last 30 plus years. Uh, I served with Bob on the Board of Education. At that time, I pleaded with him, pick your battles, you gotta pick your battles. He came up with some good points at times, but he couldn't sell them. He couldn't work with people. He turned people against him so they didn't even listen. I felt that I was being pulled into that uh, because I believed in some of the things that Bob was trying to uh, uh, correct. We weren't getting anywhere. The people would not work with Bob and when my end of my term, I left the Board of Ed and joined the Board of Selectmen where I thought I could be of more use because like they were turning on Bob, they were turning on me, the other Board of Education members, and I was no longer productive with the Board of Ed. We have a real special investigator interrogation mentality that is going on uh, amongst board members now or against other board members. It's not a cooperative atmosphere. People need to work together. You can't accomplish things yourself. You have to work with people and get along. And I think uh, I have a history of working well with people and getting things done. And I think you, by my accomplishments that I've listed tonight, and the accomplishments listed in my resume, it sort of shows you I'm in it for, to get things done for the town of North Stonington. Thank you. Uh, any response, Mr. Tesh? Sure. 
Sean, your time on the Board of Ed, and just as like every, every other thing that comes up, you're in it until you actually have to stand up and do the right thing, and then you turn tail. That's what happened. So don't say that, oh, you were getting picked on. So what you're saying is if you stand up for what's right in the face of criticism or adversity, you're just going to give up. That's what you're saying. You know, you're more concerned about you than the people in this room. And I can say, and everybody wants to bring that up, people know what happened in the school department. You know, everybody painted me out to be the problem. But look what happened. All the defenders of the wrongdoing got egg on their face because there were issues that needed to be addressed, and they were addressed. Town government. I haven't looked at anything. You say interrogate? I sit at meetings, and I just look at information and ask questions. Things come up. You know, free gasoline given away for 26 years. How many thousands of dollars is that? We were being billed by the state of Connecticut. That was all during your tenure. Equipment disappearing, no accountability. You paid for that stuff. So when you say, uh, you know, it's all confrontational, it's doing the right thing. And you know what, I'll do the right thing. I'll take the heat, but I'm not gonna turn tail and say, oh, oh it's, it's too much. I'm gonna go and uh, I'll go to another board now. Let's give Mr. Murphy a chance if he wants to respond. I don't, I don't think it'll do any good for me to, to, to continue to argue with Mr. Testa. He sees things differently uh, uh, and interprets things differently than I did uh, when I served on the board. Uh, I want to be a productive board member uh, by shifting over to the Board of Selectmen. I remained a productive board member and continued to work for the town. Um, if you could just address the root of his question, if, as for selectmen, uh, you see something that uh, you think is improper, how do you handle that as, as first selectmen? The suggestion would be that you just as soon not you know, face a confrontational situation. I want to at least give you a chance to respond to that uh, contention. As a first selectman, I would handle things uh, problems, issues. I wouldn't call the, the press to a meeting and surprise the other selectmen with an issue. Uh, as a first selectman, I would deal directly, uh, sort of like in the military, we learn to use the chain of command. I would go down uh, to the folks that are the problem, uh, uh, causing a problem and uh, solve the problem uh, in a different manner. I don't use uh, the press I don't, yeah, I don't use a public meeting to try to uh, coerce cooperation uh, in, that, in that manner. I'll be able to work with people. I won't run. All right. I'm going to move on to the next. Just had a quick response to that. Or if you that. could make, yeah, yeah. make quick. Uh, I think we I'm both not sure what you're talking about, clear. about notifying the press and that. That's never happened. So I'm not sure what you're talk referencing. And part of the problem is, the reason these things happen is the leadership that's currently there now. So where else would you address it when these things come up in a meeting? All right, I'm gonna, gonna move it along, get to another topic, and we get our time before I do so. Um, we have uh, five and a half minutes for Mr. Murphy and three and a half minutes, Mr. Testy, if you kinda uh, keep that in mind uh, using your times. Uh, the next question, goes to Mr. Murphy, who has a little more time. Uh, uh, what steps will you take or have you taken to protect North Stonington's farming heritage? And that uh, begins with Mr. Murphy. One of the things, uh, we passed an ordinance when I was in office, a right to farm ordinance. Uh, that occurred during uh, uh, my time. Uh, and we have a plan of conservation and development. It's not just a development plan, it's a conservation plan. And it spells out ways that we uh, protect our current character of the town, protect the farming aspects, uh, and, and basically protect that interest as well. It's not all about economic development in this town. Uh, we don't want to become another, I don't know, what town to use as an example. But we're North Stonington. We don't need to be a metropolis like any other 
uh, like other towns, uh, we want to maintain uh, our, the historic aspect of our town and the, tr the true character of our town. Uh, so as far as what I have done, uh, I have been uh, a, a part of that effort uh, basically to, uh, to ensure that those things are included uh, when we talk about issues. Uh, and uh, uh, unlike my uh, uh, opponent, uh, I was for purchasing the Hewitt Farm, purchasing open space in this town, whereas Bob, uh, he lobbied against it. And what we have now is a jewel. Uh, I don't know if you had an opportunity to go uh, to the Harvest Fest, I believe it was called, uh, but it was magnificent. It showed how much of our, uh, that our community is pulled together. We're not as divided as uh, one might say. Uh, we're all in it for North Stonington, and uh, our volunteers uh, are where they're the ones that really do the most good for this community. That may be a sign when you come into town that we appreciate our volunteers, but by golly, that is something that's really dear to my heart, and that's the volunteers that actually run this town. All right, thank you. And the question, Mr. Test, again, was um, uh, what steps would you take or have you taken to protect North Stonington's farming heritage? Well, it was prior to me getting on the board. The right to farm ordinance was, I did support that. Uh, keeping, it all comes back to affordability and, and keeping uh, cost in check. That'll help our farmers survive. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, your town government is not going to have all the uh, answers and, and help for your farming community. We do what we can to protect it. Uh, Mr. Murphy brings up the Hewitt property. That's a good question because, you know, the, the deed is such where in a short period of time afterwards, the way it was going, you were going to get it anyway without having to pay for it. And, and many people in this town have come forward complaining that that was their single worst vote. They regret it because when they got all the information, you got to remember it was put forward at a referendum, I believe in August, whenever it was, it was in the summertime. 200 people voted. And you, you approved that property that really shouldn't have cost you anything. And you're into it, you know, and I see in their, their uh, information that, oh, we've taken in $240,000 since it's come into effect. Well, that's over, what, eight years now? And what are our costs? I asked for this question, I asked this question at a meeting. You took in 240, but what does it cost us to maintain and upkeep that property for the last eight years? What does it cost us overall with the dam and everything? I mean, you gotta add up all them costs, which is probably, uh, it's definitely well over a million dollars you're into that property for. So I just think Mr. it should have been uh, uh, handled differently. I'm not against having the property, but it should be utilized more by the people. Uh, recently at a meeting, it was put forth that uh, the, the, the committee had uh, no wishes of having traffic through there because of the bridge project. That's the people's property, and it belongs to you, and we should have a lot more events there. Sean mentions one. We should have events there all the time. All right, let's, let's give uh, Mr. Murphy a chance to respond uh, to the point you raised in your yeah. question that it maybe wasn't worth in retrospect. It would have been the towns anyway. Well, Mr. Murphy. Bob, you mentioned not knowing what it costs to support uh, the Hewitt Farm. If, if you have some time, I will gladly read you the budget to let you know what is in the budget mm -hmm. to support the property, as well as what it's cost us to uh, repair the dam and so forth. It's not an unknown. It's clear. It's in the budget. That that's not accurate, Sean, because we continually, we send highway workers in there and equipment, and I know you guys think that's free money. It doesn't cost anything, but there's a cost associated with that. You've got labor hours, equipment. Those are the kind of costs, you know, regular maintenance that we anticipate, but we just had uh, the highway department trying to fix that uh, bridge and dam area. At what cost? Those are all costs that add up, Sean. It's not just what's in the budget, and you know that. All right, our time's running down. I wanted to get to another topic. Um, 
Uh, and it's next question to Mr. Testa, and it's for both candidates. We'll be, begin with Mr. Testa. Uh, do you think our town government has the appropriate level of transparency and accountability? Uh, if not, what would you do to change things? And first crack at that, Mr. Testa. I think we could do a better job. I think town meetings should be webcast so people can be more informed. Uh, you're doing it here tonight. Uh, information should be more free flowing. Uh, you know, even as even as selectmen, sometimes information is uh, a challenge to get. Uh, I hear some things from the public before I even hear it as a selectman. So there's definitely a communication problem and uh, you know, the amount of FOIs and things we get are, uh, are concerning. All right, thank you. Uh, can we show Mr. Testa's time is, uh, before we get uh, Mr. Murphy a chance at the accountability question? Uh, 20 seconds, right? 20 seconds. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Murphy, the question is, uh, uh, is the question of, do you think that our, the town government has appropriate levels of transparency and accountability? If not, what would you do to change things? You got your chance. I think there's always ways for improving uh, the uh, communication, the transparency. Uh, I think that we, there's not much that is hidden from the public uh, these days, but we could always do better at communicating uh, what's going on. One of the things that uh, uh, I will do as your first selectman is to uh, uh, put out daily, or not daily, but frequent postings on a Facebook page. The number of people on, on Facebook in North Stonington is, is tremendous. <coughs> and, if, and a lot of times information is shared there. Uh, I could put out information in that, in that aspect. <coughs> Reminders of meetings things that were discussed at a meeting, topic, topics of interest. So there's always a way to improve, uh, improve upon it. Do we have a hidden government? No, we don't. We have open government. There's all, take a look at the town website. We've added uh, many, many things on that website and a, a lot of information. Uh, and we're not trying to, you know, well, I haven't been with it for two years, <coughs> but. Uh, I don't believe there's any effort made to hide information, uh, but there's always a way to Im improve uh, communication. All right, thank you. Why don't we see uh, Mr. Murphy's time left? All right, 59 seconds. So Are you out of time? <laughs> 20. 20 and 59, so uh, they'll hold up the signs when you have 15 seconds left. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I know we have to be three fences uh, um, uh, on, on this last one, um, which is probably not fair, but that's the format. This got to be what? It's probably, yeah, so you have your 20 seconds for this last question. You have a little more. I think it's just under a minute. So, uh, Mr. Murphy, you get first chance at it. And the question was, uh, should North Stonington uh, continue with three state troopers or... Uh, reduced to two to save money, and what does that say about public safety? And uh, uh, Mr. Murphy, I think I've made it clear to everyone that I support maintaining uh, three resident state troopers. Uh, you may be familiar with the Mohegan Pequot grant that the town of North Stonington, as well as every all towns in Connecticut, uh, receive. Uh, part of this, what can, uh, North Stonington gets extra. Uh, there's six towns that get extra in that formula, and the first, we're guaranteed $750,000 uh, from that Mohegan Pequot fund, regardless of what their slot revenue is. Uh, those six towns get $750,000. Uh, our cost for impact aid is the troopers, and our costs are covered for the troopers. So I say we benefit from all the coverage we could get it's already paid for by the state let's keep three troopers okay and that's your time for tonight mr tester you'll have to cut right to the chase with the 20 seconds but the question on the state trooper coverage 
uh, looking at this and studying this for the past several months. I don't believe the data supports it any longer. I think the uh, population of our town compared to towns of similar size will justify two. Better utilization of our resources would go a long way. We have the full assets of the state police should we need them. Uh, they will be deployed here if there's an issue. And you have round the clock coverage from the barracks and you don't have round the clock coverage with three resident troopers. All right. Well, we thank you. Uh, we thank both our candidates and we'll just move to closing statements to wrap up our debate. Uh, you have one minute. I'll have to hold you to that uh, for your closing statement. And by a flip of the coin, we begin with uh, Robert Testa. I want to thank you all for being here tonight and your patience. Um, you know, my opponent w wants to point out some, some things that uh, I know many of you appreciate the efforts to try to hold things accountable. Uh, my only interest and my only objective is to represent you, the people, with honor and integrity and be fair. Uh, as a taxpayer, your money is your money. And, uh, you know, I, un I understand people think asking questions ups is upsetting, but as an elected official, I can't look the other way. And I won't look the other way when there's something wrong. Um, I believe I can work with anyone. And you have to look at the makeup of the current board if you want to say that's contentious. There's one figure on there that uh, everybody believes is holding the town back. It's not just me. I'm trying to move the town forward. I believe we can. Tim Main and I have many ideas to move the town forward. You heard tonight, you're basically going to get more of the same. Sean thinks everything's fine. We're going in the right direction. I think if you ask yourselves, who, is that okay? The answer for many people is we're not going in the right direction. All right, that'll have to be the last word. Thank you, Mr. Tester. And the closing statement from Sean Murphy. I'd just like to say that uh, I feel that I am uh, in the best position to take over as your first selectman. I have proven leadership ability. I have a tremendous amount of experience. And I have the ability to work with people, to communicate and work as a team to get things done. And uh, my priorities are economic development, school project, <coughs> EMS building. And as far as economic development goes, we have made great strides. We continue to do so. As you notice down the street, uh, Jehovah Foods is, is building. Uh, and, and I'm proud to announce uh, tonight that uh, uh, Tex Pubs LLC, a division of RCM Technologies, headed by Rick Wood is locating into the Quinlan Enterprise building. They started moving in uh, today. So things are looking up from North Stonington. Read the paper. We're number one as far as the economic development strides. All right, thank you. And now you can applaud for <laughs> <laughs>